So we're going to look at uh, the the case study of Charles Book Club and uh, try and build a log loss function and simply generate some uh, some logistic estimates. So let's look at the Charles uh, Book Club data set. So here's a data set where we've got about 4,000 rows. Each row is a customer. And for each of these customers, we have some data, data points or variables that we've calculated. And this is the test mailing which happened. So we've got the, uh, the result. So art history of Florence. So this variable Florence tells us whether the, these customers who were sent a mailer, did they buy a book or not? So a zero demarks that the customer did not buy and one demarks that a customer did buy. And out of this total data set, we see a sum of 338. So that means out of these 4,000 customers, about 338 of them purchased a book. Uh, purchased the book, which is the Heart History of Florence. And for each of these customers, we have some information. For example, we have the gender. One is female, zero is male. We have the recency frequency monetary variables, which are also known as RFM. R is recency or number of months since last purchase. Frequency is the number of purchases averaged out over a time period and m is the 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 monetary what is the average purchase they do on uh, per uh, unit time then what we have is uh, other variables which is first purchase or when did they they first purchase a book so how many months ago did they first purchase that is 22 months ago and r is the recency they last purchased 14 months ago then we have got the number of child books that they have purchased today, the number of youth books, the cook books, the do-it-yourself books, reference books, art books, geography books, Italian cookery books, Italian uh, uh, atlas, Italian art, and then uh, any other related purchases, and finally, whether they purchase this particular book or not. Now, the objective is clear. We need to build a model which is able to predict whether they will purchase the art history book, uh, art history of Florence book or not based on these variables. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a subset of these variables and demonstrate the concept of log loss and how do we actually build a model, uh, a logistic model and apply it on a data set. And the objective is not to fill, uh, to build a full fledged model, but to understand the error function in uh, logistic regression, which we are trying to, uh, to minimize. And how do uh, we generate estimates which, which do that? So let's have a look at a, a subset of the data set. What I've done is I've taken only a few of the variables. I've taken gender, uh, recency frequency monetary, Italian art, and then uh, I have uh, my dependent variable, which is Florence. And this is what the estimates look like. And this is the formula for the log loss. Now, what I'm going to do is this is similar to uh, to the intuition that we explained for uh, linear regression where we used a solver. And I'm going to use a solver again to generate uh, you know, estimates for regression. So what we'll do is we'll start off with initially a random uh, series of estimates for all of my variables. I'm just going to put it as uh, 0.05 for, for all of them. And we're going to calculate Z. And Z, as I explained, is the logistic regression equation over here. So this is Z, is the logistic regression equation. Z is beta naught plus beta one x one plus beta two x two and so on. And we've got all these estimates here. So let's put in the formula. This is equal to the intercept and log that intercept plus the intercept for gender multiplied by gender. Please note gender is coded as a one hot variable and we've uh, we've covered uh, the concept of uh, creating binary variables for categoric variables. Then the estimate for monthly, we, sorry for monetary, we put it over here. The estimate for recency multiplied with the value for recency. The estimate for frequency multiplied with the value for frequency. The estimate for Italian art and multiplied with the, with the value over here. Press enter and that's our Z value over here. Let's run it out and make sure that uh, our formula is working correctly. This part, so this part is, is traveling down with the formula. The estimates are locked. We look good. Now the formula for probability, as I explained before, probability is e raised to power z over 1 plus e raised to power z. So let's generate the probability, which is going to be exponent e raised to power z in Excel is exponent of the value divided by 1 plus e raised to power z. And there we have the probability. All probabilities look very high. And now, now comes the, the most important part. 
we're going to calculate the log loss for each row. For each row, the log loss is going to be yi log pi plus 1 minus yi into log 1 minus pi. So in this case, y is the, the dependent variable into log pi, and this is the natural log, so it is going to be ln. Natural log of probability plus 1 minus yi into log of 1 minus the probability over here. And this gives us the log loss. And here we go. So this is this is the the log loss for my full data set. Again, let's look at the formula. It is yi, which is f2 into log of h2 plus 1 minus f2 into log of 1 minus h2. And this is calculated for each of the rows. Now the total log loss total, as I've mentioned, this is the formula we have to sum it up. So there is a summation sign over here. So let's sum this up. And after the summation, we have to multiply this with minus 1. And we have to divide this whole by n, which is the number of which is the number of observations that we have, or 4,000 observations. So let me put in this as the count of observations. And there we have it. So that's the total log loss over the data set. Now the objective of regression is to minimize this log loss uh, by changing these estimates, or determine the estimates, or find the values of the estimates which minimize the total log loss or the error in my regression model. So let's launch Solver over here. I want to minimize this value by changing these estimates. And we press solve. These values can take any value. And let the solver run its magic. And let's see what's the minimum. It has converged. And there we have it. So this, this gives us our estimates. So we get an intercept of minus 1.98. Then these are the estimates against each of the variables. And these are my new probabilities, which I can directly convert it into a percentage term. So this gives the percentage. So I'm fitted a variable, a model, which now tells us the probability of any of these uh, customers buying the art history of Florence. And the total log loss or the error term, I have, I have now reduced it to 0 0.28. And this is how a log loss uh, function is used. We try to minimize it. But have we generated the estimates which we would have if we had actually gone ahead and built a regression model using a statistical tool? So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to actually compare these values which Excel has generated. And I've done a logistic regression model in Excel in front of you. And I'm going to now build a model in R and compare the values. So how off is my model? So let's launch R. I'm going to build the model using Rattle because I don't like coding in R. So let's launch Rattle. Let's look at uh, the, let's launch the data set. So this is Charles Book Club. Open. Execute. And it's, it's got all the variables, but I have only building a model on few of these variables. So I'm going to just use those variables. Everything ignored. Gender is input. I'm using free monetary recency frequency. I'm not using the other variables. I'm just going to you ignore them all. Italian art is there. Florence is my target related purchase. So just look, let's check it again. Italian art, recency frequency monetary, gender. So Italian art, recency frequency monetary, gender with the art history Florence as my target variable. Press execute. I don't want to partition, so. And we go to the model tab, linear, logistic. So in case this is too fast for you, uh, I will revisit how to build it in R again. But in this case, I'm just going to jump ahead and generate the estimate. So press execute. And there we have it. So this is our estimate against those variables. Let's actually compare what these values look like when I've actually used a statistical program to generate logistic regression or build a logistic regression model. Let's compare it with what the values, uh, what are the values that we got on Excel. 
So intercept is coming out to be minus 1.9659 or 1. minus 1.97, very close to what we've got. Gender 0. minus 0.44 minus 0.44. Uh, monetary 0, 0.00, which is essentially 0, 0.00. Recency is minus 0, 0.03, which is again minus 0, 0.03. Frequency is positive 0, 0.07, positive 0, 0.07. And Italian art is 0, 0.44. Italian art is 0, 0.49. So obviously, uh, uh, we would expect the uh, the package to give us better results, but even using Excel to generate estimates. We've come very, very close to what uh, R is telling us what the estimates would have been in this model. And uh, essentially speaking, this, this, this model is pretty close to what uh, the, the actual model would have been. And what we've done is we've actually used the log loss implementation or this formula, which is basically the log loss formula running over here. And we've used solver to generate these estimates. And this was just for our understanding how we actually go about using log loss in generating estimates. And if you're able to follow this and you're able to replicate this on your own Excel data sheets, uh, this will give you a very strong understanding and the intuition behind log loss and how does the logistic regression actually work in the background. So in our next lectures, we will, uh, we will continue you on uh, uh, building logistic regression models using packages like SAS and how do we actually go about testing the, uh, the goodness of fit of the models and how good or bad our models are going to be.